Thank you, Heavenly Father. We are grateful for the word of God we are going to hear from you. Thank you so much. To you be glory, honor, and adoration. In Jesus' name, we pray. We can be seated. The testimony of Apostle Paul before the judge in the court. The testimony of Apostle Paul before the judge in the court. The name of the judge was Festus. King Agrippa came to visit that place and visit the judge. And as the history had it, Agrippa was married to a Jewess, the wife was a Jewess. So, he was well accustomed to the religion of the Jews being Judaism. He was well acquainted to the customs of Israel. Their zeal, their belief, I cannot say he was a Hellenist in a way because the Bible didn't state so. One who believed in the religion of the Jews. If he was not, actually he knew so well because he got so well acquainted with the Jews, not being a Jew himself, to the point that he was married to Rosela a Jewess. And when Agrippa came to the city where Festus was the judge, Festus had a case that looked perplex. The Jews had brought Paul to him. And the accusation was that he was an evil man and so should be condemned to death. And that by their religion, he had offended beyond pardon. And Festus, being a just man, said, Agrippa should hear and examine Paul. To see whether the case of Paul warranted any such thing, having known so well of the religion of the Jews. Because at that time, Paul was reminded what preserved Paul to that time was that he had appealed to Caesar that. He would not want Festus court to condemn him. He wanted Caesar to hear the matter. It's like a case was taken from was to be taken from the high court to the supreme court. I appeal to Caesar. So he was waiting now to travel to Rome where the seat of Caesar was for this case to be hard and the judgment determined which is the last court. Let's get the story better in Acts of Apostles chapter 26. I read from verse 1. 
Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. This principle of judgment of hearing a person accused speak for himself was practiced by the Romans because according to their belief it would be injustice to condemn a man without hearing him you have heard that a man did evil a man is an evil man. This is what is happening. That's what is happening. You have not verified the story. And you are taking terrible action. You have not gotten occasion to hear the man by yourself. And you are taking terrible action. Not the case in which there is a general understanding about a person for example truth has been made known about Satan you will not be asking that I have not had Satan by myself I would like to conclude that what they said about Satan is true do you want to hear Satan by yourself the higher powers have known and declared about him. God has spoken. The scripture has gotten in written. Men of God of all integrity have presented the matter. So it is not in such a case. I'm talking about evil report given to you about people you can hear them yourself or you are in a position of authority and a report is given to you concerning one of your subjects a servant under you a particular person under you the word is saying Get at that person and hear him by yourself. Let him speak also. Nicodemus said to the Sanhedrin when they demanded Jesus condemned does your law condemn a man without hearing him does your law condemn a man without hearing that man? As you are walking here as staff in the camp, stories may come concerning someone. Somebody can come and tell you the evil that other person has done and wants to affect your mind towards that person. What should you do? Get at the two people. I want to ask him. Or let's go to him. Say what you said he did. Many times. The person who gave you the first report. Will change his words. He spoke the way he spoke. Because that man. Was not there. Now that he is. Face to face with. The person he was accusing, he will want to divert. That's so of human beings. If we learn these things and practice them, we will overcome evil and the evil man. Who seeks to do evil against his fellow, assassinate his character through backbiting and gossip. Maybe you came to this camp and somebody told you that something
something else is going on here that you don't know if you don't verify that statement you will think hey the camp is big all these buildings what is going on there you may change your mind towards God towards the preacher but if you carry that person for investigation his weights you will discover that it is Satan that wants you to leave this place so that you won't get the good God has put for you so learn to verify things learn to hear things by yourself Verse 1 again. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his stretched for the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews can you see this man now today I am happy King Agrippa today I am happy that I have the privilege now to answer for myself concerning the rumors that are going on about me concerning what people say about my life and character the misunderstanding people are carrying out around concerning me presenting me as an evil man I am grateful before your noble person, your great person, the governor, with the interest and all these people gathered and the judge, Festus. I am so happy to answer for myself. Do you know when you do the truth, you relieve people? because there are people who have been accused you follow the accusation they don't know what to say it is madness to go on the street and be shouting everybody hear me please what they say about me is not true what did they say is spreading new information too you must tell them what they said before you tell them that it is not true he can't do that he just sees people avoiding him he sees people looking slightly on him why information they have had received i'm so happy now that i'm going to answer for myself especially because i know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the jews wherefore i beseech thee to hear me patiently King Agrippa, I am so happy if other people who are not Jews, other judges, other people do not understand because we are speaking about customs, about what, about religion, about this, you will understand because you have stayed among us and studied matters concerning us. You have the reason for a while you know her conviction you know her practice you know her belief so I'm happy to speak to you because also of the position you occupy that which you understand will help many people because you will relay it my manner of life from my youth which was at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem knew all the Jews which knew me from the beginning if they would testify 
that after the most threatened sect of our nation I lived a Pharisee Agrippa you know who are the Pharisees the most threatened the most the, the strictest sect of our nation concerning matters of religion matters of God matters of the law matters of moral whatever you know them Agrippa I lived a Pharisee the highest people in the religion of the Jews in fact in the place he said I am a Pharisee the son of a Pharisee that one is a serious case Pharisee yes and my father was a Pharisee which means my own Pharisee is different from many people because I from down up to where I am now is Pharisee complete my father was a Pharisee and taught me the laws I grew up to become one myself okay and now I stand and I am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers unto which promise our 12 tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come for hope's sake King Agrippa I am accused of the Jews the Pharisees were people telling the Jews about the promise of the coming Messiah that the Lord was sending a savior a Messiah the prophet to Israel to save the world to save them and this is what we have been doing all these years even before I was born Pharisee has been in this business until I came into it now that promise has come to pass and I am announcing to people that that promise that we have been talking to people about has materialized the prophet has come it is this matter that they're giving me trouble now King Agrippa you are aware that Messiah was coming you know this you know the belief of the Jews you already know this that's why I say I'm peaceful to speak before you that Messiah has come and I am telling people he has come he has come I wonder at these people why are they behaving like this and they said they want to kill me because of it were you not waiting for the Messiah was our nation not waiting for the Messiah verse 8 why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should rest the dead Come, King Agrippa. Do you know why they are persecuting me? The Messiah came in the body of a man. As it's a Messiah. We live with us. He died. They, they accused him and killed him. But he resurrected to show that he was no man. And the people are saying, Why am I saying he resurrected? King Agrippa, now reasoning yourself. Is it impossible that God can resurrect somebody? Is it impossible that God can raise somebody from, from dead? Why should why are they thinking that resurrection is not possible? I told them that the person they killed was the Messiah and that he rose from the dead, but they're having a problem with it. How do you look at it, King Agrippa? You know the power of God. You know what God can do to any man. You know that if God wants to do a thing, nothing is impossible with him. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth which name you already hear 
facts about him you are already aware which thing I also did in Jerusalem and many of the saints did I shut up in prison having received authority from the chief priests and when they were put to death I gave my voice against them Agrippa listen this Jesus you are hearing everybody is calling Jesus people are believing in Jesus I myself thought to withstand it and clear away the matter of Jesus from among the Jews I myself as a single person I thought to do it and that made me to pioneer persecution great persecution against the religion against the followers of Jesus I thought to wreck it Christianity I thought to destroy it out of life as a result I went to people from house to house fighting them arresting them taking them to prison that's what I did I killed practically I killed many and those who didn't want to die I caused them I forced them to blaspheme God blaspheme Jesus that's what I did I dragged many to prison and when they demanded because the judge in the court will say who is a witness I say I am a witness that these people are evil they blaspheme God they are blasphemers I gave myself as a witness to the death of many people the imprisonment of many people concerning this matter of Jesus the fate of Jesus are they thinking that they are their own persecutors I persecuted more than them And I punished them oft in every synagogue. I compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Agrippa, hey. myself, I was mad against Christianity. I, my brain turned. I was so mad against this Jesus that not only among the cities of the Jews I went to people nations that have no religious problem I went to be looking for my people there <laughs> those who said they will follow Jesus I handled them right there persecuting them right into strange cities because I hated this matter Jesus Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests at midday okay I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me and when we were all falling to the to the earth i heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the hebrew tongue so so where persecutest thou me it is hard for thee to kick against the priests I was going to Damascus to arrest Christians. It's a strange city. It's not a Jewish nation. It's a different city altogether. But I took authority from the chief priests who were the religious authority of the Jews to go and present over there to Damascus to authorities of Damascus that I am sent by my nation to come and handle people that are blaspheming our God by saying 
there is another Jesus. I have come for them. And since they are in peace with our nation, they will give me access to those people. But as I was going in the afternoon, in the bright sun, suddenly I saw a light brighter than the brightness of the sun. This light covered me and the people that were journeying with me. The light was so powerful and sharp, we all fell to the ground. Then I heard a voice. So, so, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against sharp nails. The pricks, that which can prick you, pierce into you. If you want to kick it, you are hurting yourself. Then I say, Who art thou, Lord? I knew that was the voice of Almighty. But who is this? Almighty. The, the person speaking is a master. But who is this? He spoke in Hebrew tongue as the voice of a man. Who is this? Because we have not had God speaking with human voice in that manner as a man speaking. Although in the, in the giving of the, of the law he turned out there but not in this way. <laughs> then I said, Who are the Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Ah. Hey. Hey, I am persecuting the Lord. So this thing is of the Lord himself. And see, the Jesus we thought was dead is the jesus speaking to me from heaven with all authority he has resurrected from the dead he is no man he is the lord agrippa are you hearing are you following go on paul he continued and jesus continued but rise and stand upon thy feet for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee that's what Jesus said Rise up. There's a reason I have appeared unto you. I have come to make you a preacher of God's message. A minister. All these things you have seen about me. All. This very revelation I've given to you. You will talk about it. And there are other things I'm coming to let you know. Which you will talk about to human beings. You have not seen enough in Jerusalem. From city to city as you meet with my people. Even as you are persecuting them. You have heard a lot. You have seen a lot. You will tell them what you have seen. I am still going to tell you more because I will be appearing to you to tell you more. You will still tell people what I shall appear unto you to tell you, to teach you. Verse 17. 
delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee Paul I have delivered you from the Jewish nation and their persecution and their plan to kill you I have delivered you I have delivered you from the Gentiles whom the Jews want to use since they are the ruling power to condemn you Paul you are delivered from them now I send you forth to preach what is the message he said to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me check that the components of the gospel read it everybody verse 18 are you there one two read on Open their eyes, they are blind people. The Jews are blind to their God. The Gentiles are blind to their Creator. You will go and open their eyes through the gospel message. You yourself were blind. It's now that you see. You were even persecuting the Lord, your God, your Savior, your Creator that came to the world for human salvation in the body of a man. Now I see you going up and down persecuted. It's because you were blind. How could a man slap his Creator? It's hard for you to kick against a nail that is standing sharp. He said, I will kick it. Can you use your leg or your body to bend the nail by kicking it? It will pierce into your life and destroy you. Go and open their eyes. Their eyes are blind. That's why they're doing what they're doing. That's why they're following a rod that will hit them to something that's why they go they fall in life is because their eyes are blind the eyes of sinners are blind the eyes of those that don't know Jesus are blind they don't see they don't see truth. They don't see the value of truth. That is why they lie. They don't see the danger of not doing the truth. Of not speaking the truth. They don't see. That is why they lie. They don't see the implication of what they are doing. As it is even written clearly out. They don't see it. That is why they are the way they are. Go and open their eyes. It's through the gospel, the message of God, the word of God, that their eyes will open. Go components of gospel message. Number two. <clears throat> and to turn them from darkness to light. A blind man is in perpetual darkness. He 
he sees neither the light of the sun nor the light of the moon he sees neither the natural lights of sun moon stars nor the artificial light of electricity he doesn't see he is in perpetual darkness so is the sinner he sees nothing in this earth he sees nothing about heaven his brain is dark if you speak about God he cannot see because it is blank his brain is blank he can't think it he's struggling to think heaven God even the hand that is doing like this is not saying it you see my hand now I'm, because I am I close my eyes I'm not even seeing my hand move my hand moving how much more of anything in the above the hand that's the state of a sinner he does not see a man born a sinner he does not see he is in darkness so all his food his drink his ways his life his sleeping his waking his walking is darkness the light of god is not with him and the prince of darkness is satan he is immersed into satan and satanism controlled in various degrees in various degrees a man who doesn't see whoever leads him come let's go he follows but to where to where you are following him to where your life is in the hand of the person leading you unfortunately he's leading you to the ditch he's leading you to an open pit a story was told of a man who was directing a driver who was reversing the vehicle to park somewhere he said yes come yes be coming yes that he is inviting him so he thought the road was okay come so he was coming confidently because this is just becoming just becoming until he hit the wall boo he said oh stop <laughs> how will he not stop is there any way anymore that is what the devil is doing it is when you hit dead stop you have hit dead is the one leading you it's when you have fallen into the pit say, ah you are falling the job has finished it's going to lead another person because you are in darkness the light of the world you don't know the life of God you don't know the truth about life you don't practice it you don't know it your heart doesn't take it Go and turn them from darkness to light. The preaching of the gospel is to turn sinners from darkness to light. Because the world is darkness. The light of God is not there. That's number two. Three, the, the third component of the gospel. And from the power of Satan unto God. Go and turn them from the power of Satan unto God. Great percentage of human beings are carrying charm about the power of Satan. They have swallowed charm inside them. The power of Satan. They have joined witchcraft. The power of Satan. They, sell, they sacrifice blood. The power of Satan. They have an object that they bow to the power of Satan. They are in a society that they, they go out in their soul to for meetings. The power of Satan. Go and turn them from the power of Satan unto God. That's not life. Whatever rank they give you there is not life. 
and darkness you're under the power of satan not in the hand of your creator yet go and turn them it's through the gospel he that believes shall be saved he that will confess and forsake his sin shall be saved he that hides his sin shall be destroyed he's under the power of satan he's under the power of satan even among arm robbers they have rank there's new recruit there's general there's uh, Majo. Go there. Don't go there. You hear? Let them repent. Ask. They will tell you the ranks among them in darkness. The dancing stars have their leaders and the various uh, ranking stars according to their ranks. So whatever rank you have is all darkness. Power of Satan. Whatever you people are achieving there, power of Satan. Whatever you do to influence the government, to influence men, to influence churches, to influence what? Power of Satan. Go and turn them from the power of Satan unto God. They're wasting their time. But they are doomed. They are doomed because they don't know God. They don't know Him. The person they're celebrating around is Satan. Components of the gospel. Turn them to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins. They lived in sin. They have been living in sin. In fact, they were born in sin living in sin to the point that they also build their own houses of sin you were born of a family you live in a family you mature enough to leave the family and build your house so that you can also have your own family so you were born a sinner you live among sinful people you graduate to commit your own sins for full one building your own houses of sin you were doing your sin, manufacturing sin. You were a tenant of sin. Then you went to build your own house of sin. I said, I'm no more a tenant. I, am, I have my own house. You were a servant under somebody, serving him in sin. But now others have to serve you in sin. So you are master now. People are serving under you in sin. High ranking sinner. Go and tell them I'm ready to forgive them and change them. I'm ready to remove them from sin by my sacrifice, by my blood. God is a merciful God because I know their end and when they go to hell, they will never come back forever. Not these ones that just because of God's mercy so that to cause more human beings to repent he allows them to go and come back to give you message no it's appointed unto men once to die and after death the judgment and the reason why many are still in the world now is because God is waiting for them to repent otherwise they would have died since I think you are one of them you would have died since and gone to hell and be forgotten but let's try more let me take him somewhere where he will hear it better to see whether he will stop that immorality drunken life wrong company thieves i take him somewhere to see whether he will repent and stop that wicked mind that the devil gave him that's where they're still alive otherwise we have gone Tell them I will forgive their sins if they will turn to me. Turn them from the power of Satan 
unto God that I will forgive their sins and change them to my children and give them my spirit to live righteous and holy to my test to my joy and to my reward components of the gospel yes that they may receive inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me holiness they will come to heaven i will cleanse them sanctify them and they will enter heaven inheritance they will inherit eternal life that's the gospel for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life he that believeth the son of god has everlasting life but he that believeth not the son of god has no life go and tell them i'm ready to give them life when they are cleansed from sin and i will cleanse them let them believe in me i give them cleansing from sin purify their hearts they will live righteous and holy in this present world the grace of god that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men including the ones before me now teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust they should live soberly and godly in this present world that's how we live because we have responded to the gospel in this present world of darkness in this present world of satan and satanism in this present world of sin we live righteous and godly because we have turned to the gospel we listen to preachers and we accepted the message Verse 19. Where upon O King Agrippa I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. This came from heaven, it's above the earth. What comes down from heaven is above the earth, as heaven is above the earth. So, whatever the priests are saying, the high priests, the, the chief priests, religious authorities of the Jews, the Sanhedrin, whatever they are saying this one came from heaven the voice came from heaven it is superior i'm dealing with the master of the universe that spoke from heaven he is right i therefore am not disobedient unto the heavenly vision let everybody on the earth be silent the lord is in his holy temple let the earth keep silent before him I'm dealing with heaven. Who is your father that will block you? And my father said, who is your father? And my mother doesn't want me. Who is your mother? My wife. Who is your wife? And my husband. Forget that. I'm saying the voice from heaven. It's saying, repent. Turn away from Satan and serve me. You say your mother, your wife, your what? This is the voice from heaven. I'm not disobedient to the heavenly vision. That is the call from heaven. Oh Agrippa. Verse 20. But short first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all this the course of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance from that moment this thing happened to me as i entered damascus i started telling everybody god the creator of the world has sent me to you that you should repent jesus is the maker of the world eternal king the eternal lord master of the universe he was the one that was 
killed as a human being but he lived he resurrected and lives because he's God and he's telling me to tell you repent 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 turn to from dead works from your sin to Jesus that is what I began to do immediately at Damascus and when I went to Jerusalem I started it immediately I started it immediately and I went all around the where the Jews were living I started telling them everywhere this is what I have heard myself you know me you know the life I live I fought against this Christianity the change is so radical the change is instantaneous and therefore if you too have accepted this gospel bring forth the life that shows there is a change live the life that shows you have changed no more lying no you are not a new creature if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things become new. Therefore, show forth the fruit. Bring forth fruit. Meet for repentance. Show us a life character that you have repented. That you are no more that person. That person. Like I am no more that person. That fought Jesus. I'm now for him. Promoting him. Show me your own repentance. Bring forth fruit meat for repentance. Showing you a new person. Make confessions. Reveal the property of evil you have. Denounce those things and evil associations. Tell us why you're here. I came here for evil. Declare it and change. That's what he told King Agrippa. For these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. That's why, Agipa, I am here today. Because the Jews saw me in the temple. I was telling people there, Jesus has resurrected. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus demands repentance. Jesus wants you to, demands that you submit to him. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is the Messiah, the one the Lord promised. He came himself because Abraham told his son Isaac the Lord shall provide himself a lamb for the offering he came himself and gave himself for mankind now he's telling me to tell you repent it is for this they arrested me and said they will kill me go to some of these churches and go and be preaching this sound gospel they will arrest you there they will arrest you. Go to them and, and be preaching true repentance and righteousness. Cleansing of their body from jewelry, from wicked dressing, nakedness. They will arrest you quickly. Hey, 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 come here, come here. Arrest him, arrest him. That is the reason the Jews arrested me and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophet and Moses did say shall come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the face that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Well, where they arrested me, God will deliver me. Where they arrest me, God will deliver me. And all this while, I have obtained help from God. And I go about, if I see a child, I tell the child, repent, give your life to Jesus. If I meet a woman, repent, give your life to Jesus. If I meet a man, an old man, repent, Give your life to Jesus. If I see a young man, young girl, repent. That is what I have been doing from city to city. And God has helped me. I have continued in this, saying none other things but what the scriptures have already said. What Moses, the books of the Old Testament, said would happen. The prophecies of the Old Testament. That Jesus will come as a man and will suffer and will be crucified and will be killed. killed buried he will rise the third day and this is what i have done up to this time and that he as he shall rise he is an example for 
all that will believe and turn to righteousness that they also shall rise he is the first fruit from from the dead all that believe on him shall rise from the dead and inherit eternal life that's the message i've been preaching and as he does speak for himself first to say it with a loud voice paul thou art beside thyself much learning doth make thee mad <laughs> praise the lord hey the judge was so excited but he could not coordinate those things because they are not used to this thing he said what are you what is this man saying rise from the dead the hope of the fathers all those arise you go to heaven Paul! <laughs> what are you saying Kai, are you saying this with all seriousness it's madness <laughs> He didn't understand. People that don't understand see madness in true preachers. They don't understand the implication of the gospel. Pastors that are in churches have not understood God will be persecuting true preachers. They are seeing politics in true preachers. You want to carry my members? They have, they have not understood. We're talking about eternal life. We're talking about salvation from sin and Satan. But they don't understand. Because they rather see another thing. Yeah, that man is playing politics to carry you people. That is it. Then, Paul answered. And he said, I am not mad. Most noble Festus. But speak forth the ways of truth and soberness. The boldness of Paul was more because it was backed up by the Holy Ghost. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. The Lord sent the Holy Ghost upon his church. The Lord filled his ministers with the Holy Ghost. Manifestors, I'm speaking the word of truth. If you listen to this truth, you must bow and humble yourself. Every big man must bow and humble. The president will humble, the governor will humble, the commissioner, the everything, the senator, everything, call them what name, whatever big man. If he hears the word of truth, he will break his heart and he will know that he is a candidate of death. He will fall and cry out for help. It is a word of truth and soberness. You rethink. Where am I going? How is it with me? How have I been doing with God? Why have I been ignoring Jesus? Why am I playing with this? Why am I playing hypocrisy? I'm damning my soul. I can die at any moment. I would have died. It's a word of truth and soberness. Sober. Bring down your mind. Sit down. Consider. Like the prodigal son. He came to soberness. Uh, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough uh, even to spare, to spare, and I'm here suffering. I cannot even eat the foot of pigs. It takes a sober mind to take decision. I so said, I will not continue this way anymore. I will arise and go back to my father. The weights of truth and soberness. Then Paul went forth. He said, For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. <laughs> he asked question and answered it. Yes, this thing 
you are saying madness is because you're not accustomed to the Jewish religion, the Jewish faith about faith in God, faith in His word. But King Agrippa, who lived among the Jews, has learned this thing. He knows that what I'm saying now is true. King Agrippa, do you believe that what the prophet said will come to pass? I know that you believe. Hi, that big man was arrested. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. In fact, I was almost about to jump out and declare I am a Christian. Kai, <laughs> your way stirs me up. I was so true to what you were saying. I don't know really what helped me. I should have jumped out and declared, I am for Jesus. I am for Jesus. What am I waiting for? I don't know what has happened. Then Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but all also, all that hear me this day were both almost and all together such as I am except these bones. He was chained in his hand because of this gospel. Oh, King Agrippa, I wish you would not just say almost, but that all people here will jump for Jesus, will arrest, will, will, will come for Jesus, will bow to Jesus. But oh my, not that they should be chained like myself. That's the only thing I don't wish for you. That's well, almost, what are you waiting for? You think almost? King Agrippa, what are you waiting for? In fact, what is everybody here waiting for? Everybody give me your love to Jesus. That's my desire. But I'm not praying you'll be in chain like myself. Ah. That is it. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up. And the governor. And be nice. And they that sat with him. The governor is the judge. As Festus, and when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, This man doth nothing worthy of dead or of bones. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. When he came out of the court, they met in the courtroom and they were talking there. We have had them all. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Lord grant you opportunity to defend yourself. That they shall hear you and know the truth of the matter. We have had them all. And this man has done nothing worthy of death. No, even worthy of imprisonment to be put in chain like this. In fact, Agrippa said, Do you know? We would have set this man free. I would have set this man free. Except that he said he was going that he has appealed to Caesar to the higher court or highest court. Otherwise we would have set him free. Why wouldn't Paul appeal to Caesar? It is the appeal he made to Caesar that protects his life. Otherwise the Jews wanted him killed. I appeal to Caesar no further judgment because of the bribery would Festus have avoided the bribery of the Jews but he appealed to Caesar why did he appeal to Caesar God was leading him to him to prison too in some cases because these writings shall be put down he needed time to write them down for a new generation you are the new generation so whether it is imprisonment or it is in what let the lord lead your life the lord knows the way through the will that is in your life all we have to do is to follow the lord knows the way through the will darkness all we have to do is to follow my brother 
I will follow. Sing aloud. Can you see the picture of Christianity made plain by Paul's defense in the court? Who will say he has not understood? Is the man in darkness. Moon for your darkness. Moon for your satanic captivity. Cry out for God to help you. Open your mouth and pray. Cry out. God save me. I want to come out of satanic captivity. Ah. God break the yokes. That Satan has put in my life. I want to serve you. I want to follow Jesus. I repent of my sin. I will follow my creator. I give my life to Jesus. Take over your life. Let Jesus take over your life. Submit your life to Jesus. Confess your sin. Let your life change. Ask God to change you. Repent of boyfriend, girlfriend. Repent of all acts of witchcraft and immorality. Repent of lying. Follow the truth. Do the truth. Lord knows the way through the world. Done. All we have to do is to follow. The Lord is the way to the world. The All we have to do is to follow. Follow, follow. I will follow Jesus everywhere, anywhere. I will follow Him. Follow, follow. I will follow Jesus everywhere He leads me. I will follow. Follow, follow. I will follow Jesus everywhere, anywhere. I will follow Him. Follow, follow. I will follow. Him. Everywhere he leads me, I will follow. Paul, Paul's imprisonment made him to write the books of the Bible. Your suffering will produce something fine for Jesus. Your suffering will produce something fine for Jesus. The Lord will use your suffering to glorify his name. Thank you for saving me 
Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me, Lord. Thank you, my Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. I say thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. I say thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. You stand up upon your feet and raise up your hand to God for mercy. Him. I want to pray gospel prayer of, for your life. The will of God should be done in your life. The goodness of God should show up in your life. You will be in heaven. You will be in heaven. Almighty Father, the components of the gospel, fulfill it among these your people. Fulfill it among these people. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh Lord my God, your word says it, as you have commissioned your preacher to go to them, to open their eyes. Lord, with your power, with your power, let the eyes of these people be open that they may see the way. Jesus says he is the way. That they may see the truth. Jesus said he is the truth. That they may have the light. Oh Lord. Yes Lord. That they should be turned from darkness to light. Hey. May the light of the gospel. The light from heaven. Everlasting light. That shined upon Paul. Shined upon Saul. Come down for your life. In Jesus name. I command darkness. That cover your life. That cover your mind. Get out. Let the light of God take over. In Jesus name. <laughs> Satan. The Lord says these people belong to him. To turn them from the power of Satan unto God. Now, your power, Satan, over these people, I break it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I lose you from the power of Satan. Come out and be free. Come out and be free. Break your bondage. Thank you, Jesus. Satan has nothing to do with them anymore. Anything swallowed, anything walking in your eyes, walking in your mind, walking where to turn you to do evil. Any power of lust, power of greed, power of stealing, power of lying. I break it in your life. Hey, Jesus, receive them. Cover them with your own power. The power of your word. The power of the blood. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Spirit. The power of faith. In Jesus name we pray. Let their sins be forgiven. Let that mountain of guilt be removed. Let the peace of righteousness come into them. Father, sanctify them. Cleanse them. And let their names enter into the book of life. That they have a mansion there. Jesus provided it. I congratulate you. Receive your mansion. 
as you receive it by faith you shall see it in reality follow jesus follow his ways follow his people in jesus name we pray the message you have just listened to is a production of holiness revival movement worldwide Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, Contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe
Savior. Jesus, I believe. 